it is time for book to film challenge January selection black beauty hey everyone it is Shannon and I'm very excited to share that I have finished reading the January selection for the book to film challenge black beauty now this book was written in 1877 by Anna Sewell it is considered a children's classic children's novel but it's actually got something else in mind was its original intention which I'll get to um, and the film is scheduled for 2015 very generically it was going to be in February but now it's j just 2015 and it's being released by Epic Pictures Group I will leave a link below to both the IMDB page for the film as well as the trailer which is already out. Now first up I'm going to talk about the book a little bit um, I did read it on Kobo because it's a public domain title so I don't have a physical version which is why I have my handy dandy little card here um, um, and uh, first up, I, 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 the first question I have is whether or not I enjoyed it or not. And I have to say that, yeah, you know, like, uh, I will give that it was really understandable. Uh, it's uh, very clear. It was interesting to see that time period, um, s like not a historical novel of that time period, but something of that time written in that time period. I don't know how many books I've read that are like that. Um, but I have it to, like the I really thought of it as going to I really had in my mind that was going to be about a girl and her horse and it although the film might be this version of the film might be and I might have been thinking like National Velvet you know or Black Stallion I don't know about Black Stallion actually but I think I might have been thinking National Velvet um, but this the book is not is not. It is from the perspective of a horse, um, sometimes but not always called Black Beauty, and he goes through many different owners and lives in many different places and does many different jobs and talks to many different horses um, through his life. And it is from his perspective. And it's mostly, I would say, and after doing some research, it's really more of a PSA, a public service announcement about not about treating horses correctly um, and kindly and with sympathy. And the author actually did write it with that intention. She wrote it not as a children's novel, but for um, people to for horse handlers to have empathy, to understand and have empathy for the horses. So it, it has like, you know, it's weird because it's like it does have a story, but the moral of each and every story pretty much of the 49 chapters is, you know, <laughs> treat a horse correctly. <laughs> like, like, I'm not kidding. Like every single, like every single instance is really about that. And I believe that. I believe in treating animals with kindness and giving them what they need, especially if they're dependent, which is weird. I don't think of horses as dependent uh, animals or because they're not domesticated, I guess, because there are wild horses, but there's wild horses and then there's other kinds of horses. I'm not a horse expert, so I'm just putting that out there. I'm a city girl, so you know, but they do show in this book, part of the message is that, you know, horses, like you need to care for, to, you need to care for a horse correctly. You know, it can't, it's not a machine. It's a being, it's a living being and it needs to be fed and it needs to be rested and you can't push it past its limits without there being ramifications. And I believe all that. I believe all that. So for me, it kind of got a little, a little like, okay, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you there. So, but I did find by the end of the book, I was very invested in the characters and I, and, and my heart was heavy. Like any time it felt like the possibility that something can go wrong or Black Beauty could be mistreated or in my head, I always just called them beauty. <laughs> like, you know, so, so I don't know. Anyway, so I, I really, I did appreciate that I could read and understand it. I appreciated seeing something from that time period. I didn't realize that it was in England for a while. I thought it was set in the States. I don't know why. I think there was, there was some terminology or something, or maybe I've been thinking of, stuff, I don't know, like Little House on the Prairie or something. I, don't, I have no idea. Anyway, anyway, that was very clear. It was like, ah, no, England. So anyway, <laughs> I did feel for Black Beauty a lot. And some of the humans were really good too. I really liked some of the human characters and some of the human owners. But I felt like mo most of the ones that were showcased were ones that were, it was to demonstrate the ill that humans could do to animals and uh, and it also really I felt like it was also really saying like a horse could do no wrong any wrong that a horse does is due to the treatment or mistreatment it receives in every single instance and and that felt a 
bit strange and I don't like I you know I can't talk to horses so I can't ask them and I don't but I don't know like I don't know I don't know exactly how I feel about that so it made it feel very maybe that's part of it is it made it feel one-sided because it is <laughs> okay so <laughs> there you go there's that now when I'm thinking about the film like some of the things I always like to think about a film is like what the focus is, is going to be or what's essential to keep or what the tone is going to keep and I think with this one I know that it's going to be a uh, modern or contemporary retelling but I think they really have to keep that piece of you treating an animals uh correctly or you know with kindness and end with empathy because that really is the spirit of the book I unless you're going to do a period piece it doesn't I don't really see how a lot of it translates because it Black Beauty really is a working horse like he you know his job is getting few people from place to place and carting things around or being a taxi horse you know kind of thing and like that just doesn't really exist so as far as I know anywhere anymore um at, at least not in the American setting that the film is taking so where so what wh how can you how can you bring that to current day and the only the only thing I can imagine is that if it's a racehorse because you know that's a working horse you know that, that that's their job I guess but it's like should horses have jobs but then on the other hand it's like if they are dependents what what are they supposed to do? Not that you have to put someone to work or some other creature to work or anything like that. Like I have a cat. It's a, he's a domesticated cat. He just lives. You know that's what he does. I feed him and make sure he has what he needs, and he just he mostly sleeps, which is what he's doing right now. So, but like with a horse, I think often actually in the book when I, when Beauty's talking, he's happy when he's working like he's he likes to gallop he likes to he senses what's going on in the situation and wants to do well for his master and stuff like that and then some of that stuff I thought got a little weird because I was wondering if it was some kind of analogy to like like bringing up children like you know like it was especially the piece about like if um the horse could do no wrong unless they were ill treated I'm like are they saying that about people too like I and then like is that true? You know, and that's a huge philosophical question. But anyways, I got off track. So yeah, but you could, Beauty was happy when he was working. He was happy when he was useful. So, but it's like, how can you, how do you know that? And that's, I think, one of the biggest challenges with the film is what perspective to take. Because the book is from the perspective of the horse. And unless you're going to do a voiceover or something really kind of out there, you're ch it's a dramatic change so if you're changing it to this pr perspective of humans now they're interpreting what horses need but I guess in a sense the book is is a sent the sentiment of the book is showing that when someone knows what a horse the difference between when someone knows what a horse needs and when someone doesn't or is unaware or doesn't care so if it showcases both sides of that, I think it really has the uh, the 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 essence, the chutzpah, the whatever of of the of the book. So yeah, so there you go. So and I think it definitely has its challenges, um, but I am looking forward to it. And I am looking forward to the horses, which feel, now feels kind of weird because it's like they're working horses because they're like actor horses, I guess. Like that'll be in the film, but I, I you know horses are amazing, amazing creatures, and I don't really get to see them being a city girl. I see them at the C and E every year so just you know like for a little bit and uh and that's about it like it's just I've never ridden a horse I've never you know been around a horse oh I just they're just you know, I can tell I'm short so I can just like they're so big you know <laughs> like so anyway but um yeah okay so now I'm going to talk a little bit about the casting and the description of the the upcoming uh, movie so if you feel like that's a spoiler this might be a time to say see you next time um so I'll give you that moment Okay, so first I'll just I'll share the um, description of the 2015 film so you get a sense of how it is quite different. And they describe it as a film centering on the a 15 year old girl who volunteers at a city pound and convinces her grandfather in the country to adopt a horse that was rescued from an abusive owner. So obviously that's very different. None of that happens in the book. Um, and then the casting for the film includes Luke Perry who plays James which is a character in the book but he's not either of the characters in that description and because we have Bruce Davidson 
as Davison as the grandfather, and then I'm not sure who plays the uh, 15-year-old girl. The other casting, the additional other casting is Jennifer McKenzie. It's probably her. Sarah Ann Schultz, Jude as Waco, uh, Walco, sorry, Anthony Del Negro, and Curtis Ames. So I think this is taking a dramatic shift from the actual book, and I'm really curious as to Luke, who Luke Perry pay, plays. I I don't know. No idea. So we'll see that. Um, I love. It's so funny because like for me, one of the things about book film adaptations that I love is thinking about casting. It's one of the reasons I try and shy away and not know, like, not see the casting until I finish reading the book, because otherwise I tend to see the actors in my head. But I didn't actually get any any sense of who the different actors can be. James is a big character in the book. John is a big character. The guy who drives the cab uh, is a big character. But I didn't actually get any actors that really felt like, oh yeah, that would be really good. But that's also because it's a it's a set in the past so then it's like a period piece and then I automatically go to like the British actors who always do the video <laughs> like the, the, the always do those characters <laughs> in period movies and I actually don't know uh, I don't watch a lot of period stuff so I didn't it, it didn't quite come so I don't know so I guess we'll get to see when the film comes out and um, hopefully that'll be soon uh, as I said it is being released by Epic Pictures Group in 2015 uh, and uh, I really look forward to getting a chance to see it. And I'd also like to mention that Renata from the reading series, hey Renata, also is playing along with the Book to Film Challenge and she reviewed Black Beauty and I will leave a link to her review of it below. Thank you so much for doing that. It's so much fun to have you playing along. So hey! Um, and next up in February we are reading In the Heart of the Sea. Ooh, In the Heart of the Sea. The Tragedy of the Whale Ship Essex by Nathaniel Philbrick. This is, the film is was scheduled to come out in March. It has now been shifted to December, and I think it's December 25th, so that's pretty big. Um, and it's a non-fiction book. It's one of the two non-fiction uh, selections for the Book to Film Challenge. It is about the historical events that inspired the book Moby Dick. So... That is February. So please let me know if you are playing along and I, you know, because I've, it's so much fun. And this actually, I'm really cute. This actually has pictures in it in the center, but I'm not going to look at them. I'm not going to look at them. I'm going to wait. <sighs> so that's Black Beauty. Thank you so much for watching. I had, even though I didn't love the book, I still had a lot of fun reading it and a lot of th fun thinking about the um, adaptation and I just, I love doing challenges and doing exploration so this has been a blast and I hope you continue along the journey. Please let me know if you've read Black Beauty, if you've seen the other versions of Black Beauty I know there's one from the 70s and there's an animated version, I'm sure there's probably others um, and uh, you know, what you think of the book, what you think of the films and how you feel about the themes or any anything like that I'd love to hear it. Alright, thank Thank you so much for watching.